Hello and welcome back to Inquisitor Martyr. Last time we were working on the Lassan or Lacan Mayoris invasion, and we're going to continue with that. We've only got four more fights to go until this stage ends and we see what stage two is up to. Targets identified in teleportarium range. Decoded Vux transmissions and auger scans indicate high importance and limited combat capabilities. Neutralizing the targets offers significant long-term benefits. This is a lot of guys. So, yesterday I was talking about Resident Evil. I still have a bit to say about that. Not exactly that movie, since we'll have to wait and see how that pans out. But there's also a Netflix show coming out. And... I don't know what is with suddenly everybody wanting to do Resident Evil adaptations. I honestly think it was a success in the hype around 8. But... That happened. And... I don't know. I'm not looking forward to that show either. It fe Honestly, from what I've heard, it's like these two daughters trying to discover what Umbrella Corp did. And I'm sitting here looking at it going, this sounds like someone's bad script. And like they wrote a really bad screenplay and nobody would buy it or back it. So they just slapped the Resident Evil brand on it. And suddenly Netflix is like, yeah, sure, we'll give you money for that. And I just don't get why. I mean, I'm not surprised people do that a fair amount. You know, you just slap a brand on it and, you know, people are going to buy it, watch it, play it, do whatever. I mean, Star Wars is a prime example. Oh, God. That just reminded me. I saw this picture from a... One of the comics. A new comic. I don't even know how to start with this. <laughs> okay, so it has Mace Windu in it, and there's a panel with him and some clone troopers. The way it is drawn feels like a racist caricature. Like, it just. The way he is drawn just looks like some old-timey racist art. And I saw that and I thought, what the hell is this? It's... God, it's so bad. I had to look for multiple sources because I just couldn't believe it initially. Because I was sitting there thinking, there's no way this got signed off on. It, it reminds me of Hellboy's art if Hellboy's art sucked really bad. Like, the Hellboy comics have been kind of minimalist, in my opinion, for how they look. But that's fine. But this Star Wars comic just looks rough. You'd swear they didn't have any kind of editor oversight being like, hey, what the hell is this? It's the weird proportions. The gap between his upper lip and his nose is bigger than his forehead. It reminds me of uh, the anime and manga Terraformars and how the cockroaches people said were racist caricatures because they looked like kind of like black dudes. It's like that. Or I'm even looking at it like this... Terraformers, I will give, you know, benefit of the doubt. But this is one of those things where Mace Windu has an actor. You can look directly at, uh, oh my god, I'm drawing a blank on his name. You can look at Samuel L. Jackson and be like, okay, I need to make it look like him. And they just didn't. It looks weird. 
But that also feels like it's kind of commonplace within the comic industry now. People who can't draw apparently getting in for reasons unknown. People who can't draw, people who can't write, especially people who can't write. God, I saw the book it was like, I'm not Starfire. I, I saw a couple panels of that and thought, wow, this is meant for teenagers. And I can't imagine any teenager actually reading this. Negative singularity removed. Shroud? Oh yeah, song. I got excited for a second and then realized what it was. That's something I've continually been happy for when it comes to 40k, is it hasn't hit mainstream. You see little inklings of it, you know, some idiot online going, why don't they have lady space marines, and then getting butt hurt when you tell them the more behind it and explaining, like, there's a lot of reason behind it, it isn't just girls ucky, get rid of it. And they're like, no, I still want it. It's like, I don't know what to tell you, my dude. But it's just like, we. I'm glad we don't have those conversations constantly. We do get idiots who say if you, if you like the Imperial Guard or the Empire, it's analogous to Nazism. And I'm just like, why? It's like the uh, extra credits that channel they did a video, effectively trying to say that 40k paints humanity as like this all glorious savior, and that nothing they do is wrong. I've mentioned this before, but humanity sucks in this. They are very frequently frequently portrayed accurately. As an authoritarian semi, I mean, they're effectively in a uh, theocratic government. I'd say a mix of theocracy and standard, I don't know, not an oligarchy, just borderline monarchy. But they're. they're barely portrayed as good, just the people who are alive. You are guilty. Marked targets eliminated. Enemy command that structure everything? compromised. Overall outcome All satisfactory. Right. End of log. Let's go. What do we got? Hey, an Exodus rifle. Okay, now I have to actually check. Is it better? Uh, that's, there's no way in hell it's going to be better. The second I just realized what I have for equipment, there's, there's no way. I'm not equipping that. I don't do the berserk token crap. Also, I can check this. Okay, bonus damage for burning effects. Oh, wait, that's horribly weak compared to it. Okay, I don't have to care then. Yeah, 154. See, that's one thing I don't like. It's like, oh, it's 154 quality less. Yeah, because you're comparing two weapons to one. And honestly... See, that's the thing. I could really use it, but I also need these heat weapons that will just keep them. Because I need the heat weapons to offset any odds that the game pulls any shysty stuff and is like, haha, here's, you know, 60% physical resistance. if I don't counter that 
then they're gonna pull that physical resistance and I'm gonna be sitting here dumping rounds for 45 minutes trying to kill a guy. Between the stars, the ancient unseen enemies of mankind wait and hunger. Be strong and give them no quarter. Being a 40k fan, I I feel like we're kind of, at least for me, I'm stuck in this weird divide. Because on one hand, I want it to succeed. I want it to do better, be better, be popular. But at the same time, I don't want it to be popular. Because I saw what happened to Star Wars. You know, Disney bought it and just the whole thing went to hell. And I don't want to see another franchise just collapse like that. Because I can guarantee it, it would happen. You know, somebody would get their hands on it. Or the other thing would be that, you know, someone like Disney where you look at 20th Century Fox. Because Disney owns them now. And... It's like, oh, hey, they own the Alien and Predator franchises. And it's like, cool, are we going to get a bunch of new Alien and Predator stuff? And Disney's like, I don't know, we don't really give a damn, we just own it. So you're just kind of sitting here going, okay, I guess I'm going to just get nothing. Also, these chests finally give rewards and spring booby traps sometimes. It's really nice. But it's just, it's such an agitating thing to be like, oh yeah, you either are stuck being small, or you risk the thing getting sold off and being made terribly. And especially if it were to get sold to an American company. American companies, at least Americans it seems, aren't as much into 40k as... Honestly, Europe. I mean, if I'm going to use YouTube as kind of... It's a very terrible measurement system. But if I use YouTube as a measurement, if you look at a lot of the uh, battle report channels, a good number of them are European people. You know, some guys in England, some German dudes, stuff like that. At least for stuff that's in English. Because apparently a lot of my views right now are coming from Russia. Why? I don't know. I assume they just enjoy 40k. But, I mean, that's effectively also how my Twitter is. There's some dudes I follow who are Russian. Russian, Ukrainian, I think a Polish dude. A bunch of dudes who write in Cyrillic and I can't understand any of it. In the end, I'm just happy to see when people post progress of painting minis or designing in terrain. One dude did all custom terrain for the uh, Fallout Wasteland Warfare miniatures game. And he very faithfully recreated some of the ruined buildings you see in, like, Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. Which I thought was really cool. Because I don't see a lot of people doing anything for that game. I don't see a lot for, um, Infinity either, but I think that's because the main Twitter is... in Italian? Italian or Spanish? I can't remember. My mind went, I don't understand what's being said, but I'm just happy to be here. So I just kind of watch from a distance. And that also could be a big thing, is language barriers, things that I'm not getting a full understanding of the scope. But jumping back to the popularity bit, 
it's weird because I want there to be good 40k games because I mean Relic made Space Marine and I can't think of anybody who can honestly say Space Marine was a bad game but that really was the last time we had a good 40k game I mean yeah we've got this this is pretty good but in the end it's let's be real it's hard to actually screw up a game like this you know an ARPG looter Diablo-esque game you have to really screw it up to actually screw up I mean, you, you have to sit there and be like, hey, how do we design this game? And then do something like, oh yeah, no loot until the end of missions. Or most of your XP is gained by finishing a mission, ignore enemies. Effectively, just look at what happened with that uh, Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance game. God, that, that game was a disappointment. I watched streams of it early on, and it was it was funny because there were all these streamers who were paid to play the game, and you could just tell they were struggling to not just point out how bad it was. I mean, animations failing, glitches where your gear would just be gone. There was a lot of issues with that game. Which is sad, because I'd also like to see a good D&D game. That's another one where we haven't had a good one since Neverwinter Nights 2. Ah, another Enraged Token. Who at the studio for this game was just like, yeah, I really like Enraged Tokens. These are the coolest thing ever. We need to keep adding them. But that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.